Peace to the 12, man. Yeah, y'all saw this title. Y'all see the title. Uh, they never evolve white skin. And what do I mean when I say they never evolve white skin? Well, I'm going to be touching on the theory that deals with Europe where they say that all oh, Europe... Because scientifically and genetically and even historically um, via anthropologists and things of that nature and videos I've done in the past on this topic, there is a clear consensus from all these people that say that the original inhabitants of Europe were dark-skinned individuals, which is true, and I'm going to be going into that in this video again. But another thing that they teach, specifically for modern times, is that, yeah, Europe was originally dark-skinned, but they all evolved into pale people. And that is uh, simply not the case. And that'll be this video, right? So we're going to get into it. I got a lot of slides, so let's get straight to it. First, let's get the scriptures. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 21. It says, Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. And that's exactly what I'm about to do in this video, right? And like I said, it's a clear consensus that the original people on the planet Earth, so-called planet Earth, were dark-skinned people. Really, that's whether you want to go genetically or whatever, right? This is a simple Google. It says, uh, I said, typed in, the first humans were black. It says, from the origin of hairlessness and exposure to UV radiation to less than 100,000 years ago, archaic humans, including archaic Homo sapiens, were dark skinned so they tell you that they were dark skinned you know now like i said now we're gonna see if these people if someone evolved this complexion you know and, and the answer is no right and these are other studies right this is on homework study penn state university the tech interactive australian museum it says yes the first humans were almost certainly black right uh in this case, both the physical and DNA evidence strongly support the conclusion that the first humans first originated that the humans first originated in Africa. And I actually don't agree with that part, but I'll tell you where people come from in a minute. But Australian Museum. When and where did our species originate? It is generally believed that we originated in Africa. So they all say that the original people were black, right? Uh, more people. Homo sapiens evolved in East African savannas. Uh, the first modern Britons who lived about 10,000 years ago had dark to black skin. Um, Homo erectus may have been the first human species to leave Africa. Uh, the first humans to leave Africa 40,000 years ago are believed to have had dark skin. And this is from Sapiens Anthropology Magazine, The Guardian, Australian Museum, and Smithsonian Magazine. So like I said, you know, a lot of people, they straight up tell you that the original man was a dark skinned man, which is true. You know, and let me show you some tribes that they claim are the oldest. You know, we're going to touch on this, uh, this Europe concept. And the point of me doing this video, if I didn't say it already, the point of me doing this video was to show that these people did not evolve. They invaded. All right. Europe was invaded by people that came from Central Asia and they crossed through the Caucasus Mountains into Eastern Europe. All right. And I'll, and I'll prove that later on in this video. But let's go to this article I saw. It says, Atlanta Black Star. Five ethnic groups that proved that the first humans were black. Right? It says, Aboriginal Australians, also referred to as Aborigines, are the indigenous inhabitants of the Australian continent and the island of Tasmania. They are the descendants of the first people to leave Africa up to 75,000 years ago, according to the 2011 genetic study published. Right, so they say that they're the first people to leave Africa, right? First of all, when things come with these years, all oh, this was 75,000 years ago, all these years ago, right? You can grain of salt that, all right? But nonetheless, it says that the Australian Aboriginals were the first people to leave Africa, right? As you can see, the Aboriginal Australians are dark-skinned people with uh, straight or wavy hair, whatever you say, right? Um, we're just going to go to the highlighted portions for sake of time. But it says, the researchers in the science magazine study found evidence in DNA samples taken from strands of Aboriginal people's hair that the ancestors of their population split off from the ancestors of the European and Asian populations. Now, you're going to find out that these people, known as Australian Aboriginals, were, in fact, the first inhabitants of Europe, believe it or not. And I'm going to prove that later on. Um... Roughly 24,000 years ago before the European and Asian population split off from each other, right? So this is an ancestor for Europeans and Asians, or according to the study. Which, once again, 
we'll, we'll touch on that in, in, in a minute. But these are Australian Aboriginals. All right, let's go to the next people. The Andaman Islands, right? The people of the Andaman Islands. All right, this population includes the Jarawa, the Great Andamese, the Onge, and the Sentinelese ethnic groups. They are believed to have lived in the Indian Ocean for 55,000 years. The Andamese uh, are short, dark-skinned African pygmies, big buttocks, peppercorn hair. The Andamese are direct descendants of the first modern humans to have inhabited Asia. So the first people to inhabit Asia were dark-skinned, right? According to the 2002 Stanford University study, they probably left none the Northeast Africa by boat over 50,000 years ago and traveled along the coastlines of the Arabian Peninsula of India. Here's what's wrong with this, right? Why didn't the, if, if these people, quote unquote, were, if these people were the first people over there from Africa, why didn't they evolve? Why did they get left behind? Why didn't they evolve, you know? Because it's all, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But that's the question that one would ask right and these are the Andaman Islanders and once again it said what it said that uh, they were the first modern humans to inhabit Asia these are dark-skinned people then you got the African pygmies um, African ethnic group they live in the region that spans Rwanda Burundi Uganda the Democratic Republic of the Congo the Republic of Congo the Central African Republic Cameroon the equilateral Guinea Gabon Angola Botswana Nambia Madagascar and Zambia right and uh, by the way, for those of you that don't know, uh, if you've ever seen Charlie and, the Char Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Oompa Loompas are actually based off the African Pygmies. And in the original Charlie and the, Ch Ch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory book, the Pygmies are the Oompa Loompas. And he says that they were African Pygmies that he basically kidnapped and put in slavery, right? So that's what that really, that's where that comes back to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Look that up, right? And it's hard to find the original book. Because they revit, they did a what they call a revise and edit, and now they give you the modern day depiction of the Oompa Loompas, but that's not the original, right? Anyway, y'all can look that up. But anyway, since the uh, where are we at? Their uniparental genetics markers represent the second most ancient gene pool after those typically found in the Khoisan people. Researchers found these hunters and gatherers and farm and farming populations diverged from a common ancestor sixty thousand years ago. Um. And these are the African pygmies. Look at this devil. But, um, you know, telling what he did when the camera went off. But, um, then you got the Negritos. Now, this is me listing, once again, all the so-called oldest ethnic groups. All right, according to these people. You got the Negritos. What is the Negrito? Literally meaning a little black person. All right, in term used by Spanish Europeans in reference to short black people. Specifically, the indigenous people who populate Southeast Asia from the Andaman Islands near India to the Philippines, Taiwan, and southern China are also included in this distribution. So you have the Negritos that were in southern China, Taiwan, and the Philippines. The Philippines are known as the Ada people, right? But anyway, some of the Negrito ethnic groups are the Ata, Batak, the Mamanwa of the Philippines, Samang, and the Orang Asil of Malaysia, Andamese Islanders, of the coast of India and the Kunlun Nu of southern China. So they stretch from Malaysia to China, India, Philippines, right? Um, they are often grouped together with the so-called African pygmies because their physical characteristics, which include short stature, very dark skin, woolly hair, scant body hair, and stereotypes suggesting a common origin. Um, however, uh, the study concluded that the Negritos on Ottoman Island Malaysia and the Philippines are on a genetic level are very distinct populations from each other and among the most distant genetically from continental Africans of all humans on the earth. So check this out, right? Let me read that again. It says that the Negritos are genetically the most distant from continental Africans of all humans on the earth. So what should that tell you? That tells you that we actually don't all come from Africa. See, I've told you guys this in previous videos. Um, yes, the original person was dark skinned. No, we don't all come from Africa. And you have people that inhabit certain of these lands, and they are the literal aboriginals of that landmass. And genetically, that's why it says that these people right here, who they call the Negritos, they are genetically the most distant from continental Africans. Now, check that out. Even though they got dark skin color, some of them have woolly hair. You see that? Right? And these are some other pictures of some more so called Negritos. Right? 
Now, what are my thoughts on the path of human migration? Well, you guys already know. I believe what the Bible says. After all, I am an Israelite, right? Some say a hey, Hebrew Israelite. I am an Israelite, right? And the Bible says that after the flood, the ark landed on Mount Arawat. We'll touch on where that's at in a minute. It's really in the Middle East. But anyway, Genesis 8 and 4. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Arawat. Genesis 8 and 5. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. And the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen. Right? So the ark ended up on Mount Arawat. Right? In the mountains. Where is Arawat at? Well, some say that Arawat is a mountain range that's in Turkey. Others say that Arawat is a mountain range that's in Armenia. It doesn't really matter because Eastern Turkey and Armenia are both places that are located in Asia, in particular in the so-called Middle East, which, by the way, the Middle East is actually a relatively new term, right? Right. Nobody in the Bible was calling it the Middle East. But anyway, as you can see, Mount Arawat, volcano in Turkey, right? Eastern Turkey. But when I go to the Blue Letter Bible, Arawat, is a, uh, it says that it's a mountainous region of eastern Armenia, right? But it makes no difference where, where, wherever you want to say because, again, Turkey or East, in Eastern Turkey in specific is in the Middle East. It's in Asia, right? Uh, country main Turkey, officially the Republic of Turkey is a country mainly in Anatolia in West Asia. See that? With a smaller part called East Thrace and Southeast Europe. So the majority of Turkey is in what? West Asia, right? So it's, it, it's in Asia, including the mountain range, Arawat. Armenia as well is a country in Asia, right? Uh, an independent country since 1991 after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Armenia is located on the south part of the Caucasus Mountains. We'll touch on the Caucasus Mountains in a minute. At the northwestern end of the Asian continent. So the Ark landed in the Middle East, right? Uh, places like on Mount Arawat. And that's really where the human migration started. But that's not really a video. That, well, we are going to be touching on human migrations, but we're going to be touching on the, the migrations of Esau. Esau Edom, so-called white man. And proving that, no, he did not evolve white skin in Europe. First of all, he doesn't come from Europe. He comes from, uh, he comes from Asia. And I'll prove that in this video. But anyway, let's get some more things about Europe, since I keep speaking on Europe. Right? This is according to Google. This is according to Scientific Research Publishing. I typed in the first people of Europe are black. It says, now check this out. It's about to say all the things that I said, right? It says, the archaeological, anthropological, and genetic evidence indicated that the first Europeans were dark-skinned sub-Saharan Africans. So it says that the anthropology, the, ge the genes, genetic evidence, and archaeology, all right, meaning things they found in archaeological structures show you that the first people of Europe or dark-skinned sub-Saharan Africans, period, right? It's from Scientific Research Publishing. Other places, The Guardian, Daily Mail, Gizmodo. It says Europeans were dark-skinned until 8,000 years ago. It says pale complexions were brought to Europe from the Near East. Now, check this out. It says pale complexions were brought to Europe from the Near East study claims. That's what I'm going at. Like I said, yes, they do come from the Near East. They come from, they come from uh, Central Asia. That's where they come from, right? And then they crossed, they uh, they crossed the Russian steppe, they crossed the steppes of the Caucasus Mountains and made it into Eastern Europe. But they come from Central Asia, right? Now, now really they come from Mount Seir, right? You know, but that you know I'll do a whole video. I'm gonna do a video called uh, the timeline of Esau or something like that. And I'm gonna go from how they got to Mount Seir to Macedonia, uh, to Greece to Rome, you know how they got everywhere, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna include sources, but that's that's another video for another day. But they tell you that the first people of Europe were black. All these different sources, right? Smithsonian, Science AAS, CBC, New York Times, NDTV, Australian Broadcast Corporation, ResearchGate, uh, University College London, Sci News, right? Early Brits on had dark skin. Uh, Europeans, they, but they say they evolved white skin. Is that the case? No, it's not. Europeans had dark skin, blue eyes 7,000 years ago. They were dark skinned. Europeans were dark skinned. Europeans were dark skinned. The first Europeans were dark skinned Sub Saharan Africans. Dark skinned. Um, European hunter gatherers had dark skinned, blue eyes. Uh, they lived in modern Spain 7,000 years ago. So there you go. Like I told you. Uh, National Geographic. It says uh, 
about 45,000 years ago, those first modern humans ventured into Europe, having made their way up through the Middle East. Through the Middle East, their own DNA suggests they had dark skin and perhaps light eyes. Through the Middle East, well, doesn't that link with, like I said, Mount Arawat? Mount Arawat, where is it at? One second. Mount Arawat is in what? Turkey, which is located where? In the Middle East. It's all adding up, right? But, um, where was that? Their own DNA suggests they had dark skin and perhaps light eyes, right? But they, what they try to do, the consensus that they try to say is, yeah, they were dark skinned, but over time, they evolved uh, white skin. And notice they say words like 8,000 years ago, 20,000 years ago, 40,000 years ago, 80,000 years ago. Why do they keep going into these deep timelines? Because you can't find a civilization that was 40,000 years ago, right? So in other words, what they're trying to say by sneak, sneakily sneak dissing, they're trying to say that, oh, nobody made a civilization until they evolved into the Caucasian. That's what they're trying to say. That's why they go 40,000, 28,000 years ago, which is simply not the case. And I'll prove that in this video. But the thing is, they never evolved pale skin right they never evolved pale skin that's not how they got into europe right and i'll tell you how i know for a fact that they did not evolve this skin because to this day they are birthed by so-called black people they come from the so-called black man and it, and it wasn't it didn't need a state of evolution let's prove that i'm gonna show you three african couples in modern day who gave birth to a white child right three different times and these are all of these cases are so-called black people who have no Caucasian DNA. They have no, um, they have no so-called white, um, what do you say, uh, ancestors. That's the word I'm saying, right? Let's go to the first case. You got Ben and Angela Ahegboro. They're a black Nigerian couple. And they gave birth to a little girl with blonde hair, white skin, and blue eyes named Numachi Ahegboro. You see that? Straight blonde hair, blue eyes pale skin right so they didn't evolve but that shows you also what that shows you that they come from us like i said i had a guy in my comments a couple months ago he said oh no nah, brother jacob and esau don't have the same parents yeah they do brother and yes yes jacob and esau's parents were so-called black right and i've done a video on that already but um uh black people to this very day can have pale babies and they can have babies with straight hair and they can have babies with green hair red hair not green hair, green eyes, blue eyes, red hair, blonde hair, brown hair. This is all a thing, right? But anyway, let's let's get into this. Um, if anything, it's not an evolutionary trait. It's simply just a mutation. And I would argue it's probably like a uh, um, dominant mutation, right? But we'll get into that in a minute, right? Um, the astonishment, it says, for scientists, this genetic phenomenon is possible, but remains unexplained to this day. Right, it remains unexplained to this day. The astonishment is great because these parents have already had two dark skinned children and have no white ancestors. You see that? No white ancestors in their families, nor is it the result of adultery. Right? This is what they say. Um, I'm only gonna read the highlighted portions for sake of time. For him, this situation can occur if the parents have white ancestors in their family, but in this context, this is not the case. They have no white ancestors. For scientists, the probability of black parents having a white child may be a result of a genetic, what? Of a genetic mutation carried by the parents. That is the mutation occurring in the reproductive cells of one of the two parents. And thus, and this mutation would be dominant. Like I said, this is a dominant mutation and nothing more. It has nothing to do with evolution, right? They didn't evolve white skin in Europe. That's a damn lie that they perpetuate. Let's get another example, though. Let's go to Arlette and Francis uh, Tashibangu. This is a black Congolese. These are black Congolese parents, right? Um, it says, the story of this family, unlike any other, began when Arlette gave birth to a white child named Daniel. Daniel will be born white with blonde hair in a family of black parents. At the Leicester Royal Infirmary Hospital in England, right? Then the doctors reassured them Daniel is their child. He is neither albino nor mixed race. So they say he's not mixed race and he's not an albino, right? 
which we're going to touch on albinism as well. Could this be a dominant form of a, uh, could this be a dominant form of albinism, right? Could this be another type of albinism, should I say? Well, the word albinism, or the word albino comes from the word uh, alb, which means white, right? So really it's like whiteism, and I'm going to prove that in a minute. But anyway, they allege that they're not the same thing. Be, we'll, we'll, get, we'll touch on that when we get there. But anyway, uh, doctors believe that Arlette and Francis gave birth to a white child because this phenomenon has already happened. And one of Arlette's grandmothers who would have given birth to a white child, but that was six generations ago. So this is nothing new. Her grandmother, six generations ago, gave birth to a white child as well in the same scenario, right? Um, and no, and they had both had black parents. That's why they said earlier what that they had. Uh, where is it at? Was this the part where they said they didn't have any ancestors, white ancestors? Anyway, let's get another example. Um, you got. Ethelbert and Naki Makonum, 04, they're black Nigerian parents, and they had another one. Uh, these are black Nigerian Igbo parents, and by the way, uh, the majority of the people of the Igbo tribe are Israelites. You can look up the brother named uh, Olato Aquano, born in the 1700s. I did a video on it, and he writes an uh, autobiography on his life, and he talks about all the Hebrew customs they had before they took him and put him in slavery. That's because... Majority of the Igbo are Israelites. I've done a video on that. Um, what was it called? I think it... Uh, I don't know. Ask me in the comment section. I'll see the link to the video I already did on the Igbo. But anyway, um, if I read it. But uh, gave birth to a white child named Emmanuel. So these Igbo parents gave birth to a white child named Emmanuel. He was born in Great Britain in 2007 with white skin and green eyes. Like I said. Doctors say he is neither albino nor mixed race. See that? Um, this kind of case happens in one million cases worldwide. All right. It's, see, it happens a lot. It happens in in many cases. If there's billions of people on Earth and this happens one in a million times, this happens. This happens quite a bit, you know. But anyway, little Emmanuel regularly wonders why these sisters are black. And he was born white. But this is still case reminds explain. Now he said his sisters are black. He was born white. Like I said, Jacob. Jacob was born a so-called black man. But Esau wasn't. Right? He wasn't. And really, let me say this too. You know, I've already said this in previous videos. Skin color does not determine your uh, lineage. It doesn't determine your uh, race, your ethnic group. Um, it's determined by the seed line of the father. Right? A Hamite comes from Ham. A uh, Shemite comes from Shem. Uh, someone who is Japheth comes from Japheth, right? An Edomite comes from Esau. An Israelite comes from Jacob. It all comes from the man. An Ishmaelite comes from what? Ishmael. That determines the seed line, right? It has nothing to do with one's skin color or their hair texture. You know, even though that's the thing that's commonly put out there, that's actually not the case, right? But anyway, um, where was that? Little Emmanuel, why his sisters are black and he was born white, but this case still remains unexplained. The parents were shocked when their child was born, but the mother explained that she has a distant cousin in her family who had a similar case. So she had a cousin that had a similar case. See that? Now let's deal with, let's, let's touch on albinism. Like I said, the word alb comes from the word white, right? So meaning what? A so-called white man can't be too far, far from uh, this um, label. Because the prefix albin, albino, alb means white. Albin, white, ism, condition. The white condition. See that? Albinism is a condition of lacking pigment in the skin, hair, and eyes resulting in a white appearance. Right? So they're really not too far from um, the definition. Um, and, and just like how this was a mutation according to scientists. Let me go back. It said what? It said uh, scientists deem this as a mutation right it's really a mutation nothing more when they say evolution it's just a mutation right um now someone can argue they say oh evolution is a is jump started by a mutation that happens right that's what they say right <laughs> whatever whatever you got to say but this is simply a mutation clearly this child didn't evolve right it's clearly not what happened but um anyway Albinism in any of its forms is the result of heritable mutations. 
that lead to defective monocytes, unable to properly synthesize melan melanin or distribute it through dermal tissues. Um, Study.com is white skin and mutation. The occurrence of white skin. Now check this out. As I typed in, I didn't even type it out for this. I said is white skin a mutation. It says the occurrence of white skin results from genetic mutation over the period among people belonging to dark colored descent. So that proves that they all come from us, right? Results from genetic mutation over the period among people belong to dark colored descent. The original man is the so-called black man, right? Now, albinism has many types. You got OCA1, OCA2, type 1, OCA4, OCA5, OCA6, OCA7, right? Now, you got one version, which is the uh, most sun damaged version, I guess you could say, where the hair is usually white, often translucent, and the skin is very pale. That's OCA1, right? Then you have something called uh, OCA1B. It's uh, called albinism. The yellow mutant type is more common among the Amish than in any other populations. And results in blonde hair and the eventual development of skin pigmentation during infancy throughout the birth. Difficult to distinguish from other types. Um, the most common type of albinism is OCA2, which is caused by a mutation of the P gene. People with OCA2 generally have more pigment and better vision, right? So they have a little bit more pigment. Doesn't that doesn't that sound like someone we know, right? <laughs> uh, but they say that they're not the same, right? Like I said, I feel like this is just a dot. I feel like you could say that Esau is just another type, has another type of albinism, if not just OCA2. But if they don't want to claim that, we could just say that Esau is a type of albinism. Well, really, like I said, the word goes back to meaning white, right? To result in a white appearance. But anyway, um, nonetheless, I digress. Um, skin mutation there an MC throughout birth and blah, 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 blah. Um, the most common type of albinism is caused by mutation of the P gene. People with OCA2 generally have more pigment and better vision than those with OCA1, but cannot tan like some of the OCA1B. A little pigment can develop in freckles or moles. So these people cannot tan the OCA2s. People with OCA2 usually have fair skin, but often not as pale as OCA1. And pale, blonde, to golden, strawberry, blonde, or even brown hair, and most commonly, blue eyes. Affected people of African descent usually have a different phenotype appearance. Yellow hair, pale skin, blue, gray, hazel eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And once again, albino, albino comes from the Latin albus, which means white. Albo, I know, Portuguese, it just means white. Right, and what what do people classify themselves as specifically in America? They say the so-called white man, right? Um, other places they might tell you, "Oh, I'm German, I'm French, I'm Sweden," but in this Babylon, in this land of confusion, Babylon the Great, people go by black. Oh, I'm black. That's what people say. Oh, I'm a black man, black this, black that, or I'm white, which is this is which is asinine, right? <laughs> because if you deal with someone in the Latino community, they don't say, "Oh, I'm a brown man." No, they'll tell you, "I'm." Uh, I'm Mexican. They'll tell you, oh, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, right? A Chinese man, he won't say, oh, I'm the yellow man. He'll say, I'm a Chinese man, right? Or someone will say, I'm a Vietnamese or a Japanese. But, um, you know, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> Point is, once again, like I said, a nationality is not determined by a damn skin color. Anyway, um, once again, it says it is a mutation. Albinism is a mutation. Um, a change in the DNA sequence of an organism. And what is a mutation? A mutation is a change in the DNA sequence of an organism. Mutations can result from errors. Mutations can result from errors in DNA replication during cell division, exposure to mutagens, or viral infection. Right? Now, this on the screen, this is a so-called albino girl. Now, doesn't this just look like a pale-skinned uh, so-called white woman or white female? I don't know if this is a girl or a woman meaning well, I don't know how her age but anyway and is it a birth defect well albinism is a rare genetic disorder where you aren't where you aren't born with the usual amount of melanin pigment right uh, melanin is a chemical in your body that determines the color of your skin hair and eyes so it says melanin determines the color of your hair your skin and your eyes most people with albinism have very pale skin hair and eyes they are prone to sunburn and skin cancer 
So people with albinism are prone to skin to sunburn and skin cancer. So that's what it says. People with albinism are prone to sunburn and skin cancer. Well, wouldn't you know that there's a group of people who they say are not albinos that have, once again, they are also prone to sunburns and skin cancer, right? But let's we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's keep going. Is albinism a defect? Um, albinism occurs when one of several genetic defects makes the body unable to produce or distribute produce or distribute melanin, right? Um, now check this out. I typed in how likely are albinos to get skin cancer? Extremely high. It says the risk of developing skin cancer and skin disorders are extremely high and studies suggest that most people with albinism die from skin cancer between the ages of 30 and 40, right? Extremely high. Uh, are people with al albinism more susceptible to cancer? People with albinism are also sensitive to the effects of the sun, so they're at higher risk of getting skin cancer. So this is in reference to people who are albino. Well, wouldn't you know, well, wouldn't you know who else gets sunburn and skin cancer? who they don't classify as albinos, the so-called white man. I'll show you that. Skin cancer can affect anyone regardless of skin color. Right? Yeah, but we'll, let's look at the rates. The incidence of the skin cancer among non-Hispanic white individuals is almost 30 times higher than that among non-Hispanic black or Asian Pacific Islanders individuals. Now, I wonder why that is, right? 30 times higher to get that. Now, mind you, they say they're not albinos, but they suffer from a can't from a uh, disease that targets albinos right and once again the albino comes back to the word album which means white any any damn way right now I will agree that um certain th certain so-called white people they actually do have a low a low uh, form of melanin in them that's why they can get tans and things of that nature so you hear a lot of so-called uh, I don't know what you want to call them a lot of a lot of uh, YouTuber type, uh, Kemet type dudes where they say, oh, they have no melanin. That's not true. Actually, you do have certain white people that actually do have melanin, right? Which is why they have black hair. That's why certain Italians are a little more dark skinned. Well, once again, we read what? That melanin, that melanin, uh, determines your, your, uh, where was it at? I don't know where I got it at, but it was saying that melanin determines your skin, your skin, your hair, and your eyes, right? But anyway, Nonetheless, let's keep reading. Uh, what gr what groups are, mo are most at risk for skin cancer? Now, check this out. This is from cancer.net. It says, people with lighter colored skin, blonde or red hair, blue eyes and freckles are at an increased risk for developing skin cancer. People whose skin has a tendency to burn rather than tan also have an increased risk. You see that? What ethnicity gets skin cancer the most? Medical News Today. It says white people appear to have a generally high vulnerability to skin cancer than other groups. Um, which skin type has the highest risk of skin cancer? Skin types 1 and 2. Right? And just like I said, they suffer from sunburns and skin cancers at high rates just like the uh, albino mutation. Right? And even when you look up the statistics, the rates of skin cancers in countries with the highest rates of skin cancer worldwide. You got Australia, New Zealand, Denmark, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, Germany, Slovenia, and Finland. Um, notice, notice, a, notice a pattern there. The all so-called white man. All right, all places where it houses the so-called white man today. Um, anyway, continuing on, where the highest rate is, it's in Australia, followed by New Zealand. Highest rate. Uh, what nationality is most likely to get it? It says white people. I read that before. Um, Skin cancer is the most common malignancy in Israel. Isn't that interesting, right? Um, uncontrolled exposure to ultraviolet radiation. Skin cancer is so high in Israel, right? Now, didn't I tell you in Songs of Solomon, chapter 1 and 5? I don't have it here, but didn't I tell you in Songs of Solomon, chapter 1 and 5, um, that uh, I am black but comely, O you daughters of Jerusalem, as the tense of Kedar. And then, they, and then she later on says that the sun had blackened her. And I think that's verse six, uh, because the sun had looked upon her skin. So you would wonder how how this would be an issue from the radiation when it just darkened their skin like it did the woman, like it, like they did the woman in Song of Solomon one and five who said that she was black, or they claim that's a she because some people say that's a woman that's speaking and some people say that's Solomon himself. 
either way, it's an Israelite, and they say that the sun darkened their skin and blackened their skin. Well, the only people that get blackened by the sunlight are so-called black people. I've done videos on that, right? So, if anything, we can just call this Alb X or something. I'm making this up, like Alb X or something. But anyway, that's where I might touch on the on the uh, albinism part. And I said they never evolved white skin. They didn't, and I kind of proved that this is just simply a mutation, right? It's a mutation, a dominant mutation, right? Um, but anyway, let's continue on. Let's go to the cold complexion myth. Because a lot of people say that, oh, the cold climate caused evolution of white skin, right? Or let's say people living in northern latitudes often don't get enough UV synthesized vitamin D in their skin. You know, because I've heard that before. I was reading this book about complexions. It was an old book um, from like the 1800s, I think. I think it might have just been called Complexions. And they were like, oh, the people in cold climates, they get white skin. Let's debunk that real fast. Um, cold climate caused the evolution of white skin. I put that in there right there. Um, we know that's not true because you have... A bunch of dark-skinned people that live in cold climates. You have a bunch of dark-skinned people that live in the mountains. And they don't have pale skin, right? You have the Khoisan people. We touched on them earlier. Um, it's suggested that they've been there for 150,000 years. Like I said, they always throw these years out there, right? Um, in Lesotho, you can find the Khoisan people in Lesotho, which is a relatively cold climate. You see the mountainous range. You see they're, they're uh, wearing clothes for, for that uh, weather. Uh, you have the Aboriginal Australians that lived up in Snowy Mountain, right? How long have people lived in the cold mountains of Australia? 20,000 years ago, the, the Ngarigo and the Walgo people were the Snowy Mountain's most permanent residents. You have the Australian Aboriginals that lived in the mountains of the Snowy Mountains of Australia. They didn't get any whiter. Um, you have the people in the Siberia region. Um, uh... You have people in the Siberia region, uh, like the Ket people. Um, as you can see, dark-skinned people, the Ket people. Um, who are the Kets? The Kets are thought to be the only survivors of the ancient nomadic people believed to have originally inhabited central and southern Siberia in the 1960s. The Yu people were distinguished as a separate, though similar, group, right? And they were in South Siberia. And as you can see, the Ket are dark-skinned people. They lived in Siberia. And they said what? That they were the people that originally inhabited Siberia. Which means what? The original people that inhabited the landmass of Russia, as you can see, uh, look like these people. Cat people. Or I should say they were brown skinned people. Here's other pictures of uh, photos. The Yu people, also dark skinned. Um, brown people. They're distinguished from the Ket. You have the so called Eskimo tribes, right? Inuits, including Alaska Native, the Inupiat, the Canadian Inuit, the Greenlandic Inuit, and the Yupik, or Eastern Siberia, Alaska. You know, they live in the cold. Um, you see they're brown-skinned. Um, the Himalayan Mountain Tribes, they live up in the Himalayan Mountains. The Champa, the, L the Ladeki, the Balti, and the Dard peoples. They live in the Great Himalayan Range of the Himalayas, and they're, they're brown-skinned as well. Um, thousands of years ago, people lived in the high mountains of the Tibetan Plateau, still dark skin in the Himalayas, right? So that, so that whole cold climate thing is butkus, right? So that cold climate thing, as well as that, that uh, oh, they evolved it over time, they evolved pill skin over time, uh, that's how they got there, no, 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 no. This why, this why it's warranty in 1 Timothy 6 and 20, when it reads, O Timothy, keep, not, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings, in oppositions of science falsely so-called. You know, we got to avoid a lot of false science, a lot of pseudoscience that people throw out there. With some professing of error concerning the faith, grace be with thee, amen. The first Timothy was written from uh, Lydosia, which is the cheapest city of uh, Pariah, Pakatiana. Pakata, uh, I'm probably butchering some of these words. But anyway, it says, oppositions of science falsely so-called. Other versions it says, falsely called knowledge, um, oppose you with their so-called knowledge, falsely called knowledge, so-called knowledge, falsely called knowledge, right? So it's false, fake, pseudo, right? And it is a pseudo thing to think that <laughs> the original Europeans were dark-skinned, which they were, and then somehow they just they just evolved 
into the pale skin people. That's not true. They were invaded. Just like just like America was invaded, and they became the, the uh, majority. Just like how Australia was invaded, they became the majority. Just like how New Zealand was invaded, they became the majority. It, it, that, that, <laughs> that's a pattern there, isn't it? But anyway, you know, and I was gonna do a, I was gonna do a segment of so-called dark uh, skin people having all the phenotypes. But I decided to do a video on that in of itself. But you can look up Khoisan people. They have epicanthal folds, so-called Asian eyes. Um, the Negrito people have epicanthal folds, so-called Asian eyes. The Aboriginal, Aborig Arib uh, the Aboriginal Australians have straight and wavy hair. The Dravidians of South India have straight and wavy hair and Caucasoid noses. The Melanesians are brown-skinned people, with, really black people with blonde hair. Um, there are Africans in Africa with Caucasoid features. Um, there are black people with red and brown hair. There are black people with blue eyes. And some of them have something called ocular albinism. So these are all things, right? I just wanted to touch on that. But again, I'm going to do a video on phenotypes uh, in of its own separate segment. Um, I kind of went on like a lot dealing with albinism and genes and stuff. I haven't even gotten to them invading Europe, and I'm 40 minutes in. Damn. I'm very long-winded <laughs> today. Anyway. So let's get to this part, the original European. Let's go to the original European. Right? So let's look at something known as the Otzi Man. Otzi the Iceman, or Otzi the I Iceman, however you say it. Why is, who is Otzi the Iceman? Otzi the Iceman is Europe's oldest known natural human mummy, offering an unprecedented view of Chalcolithic Europeans. Otzi is the world's oldest wet mummy, and the clothes he wore and equipment he carried are unique. No other organic material from the Copper Age has survived. So they, this is Otzi the Iceman. Now the propaganda they feed you, they say, oh, this is what Otzi the Iceman looked like, right? And they have him in this on display um, at a museum, and they're like, oh, this is Otzi the Iceman. Ain't even what he looked like. Ain't even what he looked like. Right? Let's prove that. Otzi the Iceman had brown skin. 5,000-year-old Otzi, 5,000-year-old Iceman had dark skin and receding hairline. Did Otzi have dark skin? Otzi had much more melanin in his skin than expected, making him darker than the modern Sicilians, right? So Otzi, he, he was a dark-skinned person. Like I said, they, they, <laughs> this is a lie right here, right? Um, Otzi the Iceman, uh, it says he was dark-skinned here on Explorer's Web. He was darker skin in Mrs. Smithsonian Magazine, dark skin, new scientist, dark skin, uh, Brackwell News. The Guardian, he had dark skin, dark skin, right? And let's look at his actual mummy. This is O.C. the Iceman's actual mummy. As you can see, he clearly had dark skin. And yet they give you this guy. <laughs> they give you this guy. Isn't that funny? And this is O.T. the Iceman's mummy. He clearly had dark skin. And you might say, oh, it's a mummy. Why do you say he had dark skin? Well, for those of you that don't know, Caucasian mummies exist. This is a picture of a Caucasian mummy, the Terra mummies. The Terra mummies are ancient Caucasian mummies. As you can see, look at the skin complexion of a Caucasian mummy. Look at O.T., man. So they been knew O.T. was a brown-skinned man. Once again, the original inhabitants of Europe were dark-skinned people. Here are more of these uh, Terra mummies. And for those who know the Terra mummies are a series of mummies discovered uh, in Jinchang, China. All right, which date back to 800, 1800 BC with a new group of individual, individuals recently dated to 2100 to 1700 BCE. And these are the Terra mummies. These are Caucasian mummies, right? And this goes back to my theory I had on a video I did on the Moors and the Moabites where I, where I said that I, I'm, I'm, I'm believing that the Moabites add mixtured with the Edomites to create uh, some modern uh, specimens of today. I'll have to do more research on that, but this this definitely helps because these mummies were found in China in 1800 BC. But anyway, so I mentioned the Aboriginal Australians. They said they were the first people to leave Africa allegedly, um, and that they had to split off from Europe and Asian populations. And uh, yeah, so like I told you guys, in, in reality. Uh, the in actuality, Slaki, the Australian Aboriginals were the original inhabitants of Europe, right? You can look up a guy named Cheddarman. Cheddarman lived around 10,000 years ago. He's the oldest, almost complete skeleton of our species, right? He was found in Britain. This is Cheddarman. This is what they say Cheddarman looked like 
dark skin. He looks like an Australian Aboriginal. And I'm going to show you a side-by-side. Uh, uh, side. This is what they say Cheddar Man looked like, Mesolithic Skeleton, right? And this is a picture of an Australian Aboriginal, right? They look like brothers. They look like brothers. All right, let's go to the anthropologist David McRitchie in his book, Ancient and Modern Britons. Guy who lived in 1800, born in 1851, he wrote a book called Ancient and Modern Britons, right? And he came to this study in the 1800s, which means they sure as heck know now, right? Anthropology, for those of you who don't know, is the study of the origin and development of human societies and cultures. So we're going to go to page 7 of his volume 1, Ancient and Modern Britons by David McRitchie, and he says... Not only does Mr. Huxley argue from the appearance of certain existing Britons that they represent in a degree a British race of Australoid type. See that? Australoid type. But there are visible and tangible proofs of the previous existence in our island of such a people. Like I said, the Australian Aboriginals are the Japhites who originally inhabited the British Isles. Right? Um, these proofs are craniological. We know, says the writer, that... Uh, the first inhabitants of Britain and more especially those of the northern parts were craniologically of a type approaching to the Negro or to the Australian race. All right? And it talks about the skulls that were found in the earliest race were of the Australian type. Um, it is remarks upon the Aborigines of Tasmania. Mr. Bonwick refers more than once to their kinship structurally with the prehistoric Europeans. Right? The Aboriginals. They're the prehistoric Europeans. The earliest inhabitants of North Britain were cumbocephalic, boat headed approaches to the Negroid or Australian. So you had Negroid and Australoid people inhabiting the British Isles. Right? Page 16, he tells you this. It says, uh, The question of the origin of the white races which have now long held the supremacy of these islands. Scarcely enters into the present inquiry, which has to do more with their colored predecessors, meaning the people that came before them. It says, while the fourth, as we see hence, that the home, if not the cradle of the white race, was Europe. So they say that, oh, the cradle of the white race was Europe. Not true. But there seems to be little probability of any of these theories ever becoming substantiated. We have just seen that many scientific men hold that there are some grounds for believing that portions, at least of Europe, have formerly been inhabited by black, tawny, and copper colored races. Right? So Europe was originally inhabited by black, tiny, and copper colored races. Let's get another book. Charles Squire, Celtic Myth and Legend, Poetry and Romance. We're going to go to page 19, where he says, The earliest of these two races would seem to have inhabited our island for the most ancient times and may, for our purpose, be described as Aboriginal. See that? Um... It was the people that built the long barrows in which is variously called by ethnologists the Iberian, Mediterranean, Berber, Bosque, Silurian, and Esquarian race. In physique, it was short, swarthy, swarthy meaning black skin, dark skin, dark hair, dark eye, and long skull. Its language belonged to the class called Hemetic. The surviving types of which are found among the Gallus, Abyssinians, Berbers, and other North African tribes. So the peoples... Of the Mediterranean, Iberia, meaning places like Spain, uh, the uh, Berber, Bas, Silurian, Esquarian race, they all come back to the people like Gallus Abyssinians, right? Of the African type. This is the Gallus tribe, for those that don't know. The Abyssinians, these are the Abyssinians, right? Really, Abyssinia is just another word for Ethiopia, right? Uh, the highland region of East Africa that is now Ethiopia and Eritrea, the Greeks and Romans called it Abyssinia. Ethiopia was formerly called Abyssinia, right? By the Greeks and the Romans, at least. Right? So there's that. Then we go to Scott Elliott, George Francis, born in 1862. He wrote a book called Prehistoric Man and His Story, a sketch of the history of mankind from the earliest times. See what he had to say. Um, see what he had to say. When he talks about the Negroid of Grimaldi, right? It says, the Negroid of Grimaldi. Um, we're going to go to the highlighted portions, right? These Argnations and their Magdalene descendants pervaded all Central and Southern Europe, right? Entering France, Italy, they were Negroid, perhaps pygmy folk, right? Um, the Argnations were originally an African 
and if he transverse North Africa on his way from Egypt and Mesopotamia. The other pygmies are the oldest African race. The Negroids uh, differ greatly from the Bushman. The Aranations were acquainted with the Negroid stock. It talks about them being in Spain, Brittany, Sardinia, Ostdorf, Caithness, right? So, they, so all these things I'm saying, they already got the skulls. They, they got the DNA. They got all this stuff, man. The amount of a lot of these people were talking about this in the 1800s, right? But um, let's continue. A Negroid just means akin to the Negros, right? Member of black skin race. Um, you can look up the Negroid of Grimaldi, or they say the Grimaldi man. The Aurignacian cro magnum man from 26,000 years ago to 22,000 years ago, right? Now, this is what they say the Grimaldi man looked like. Once again, he looks similar to an Australian Aboriginal man. Look at the right to left comparison. Right? Look at the right to left comparison. Let's continue, though. Uh, Paleolithic man in Terramea settlements in Europe by Robert Munro. See what he had to say in his book where he says the Negroid skeletons belong to the short dosephalic race de Grimaldi. This is soy. Look at this. Khoisan man, look at this skull, same type of skull, right? The Negroid of Grimaldi and the Conebred Compel man, ancestors of some European nations. They say this is the modern Bushman, yada, 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 right? And we could even pull up civilizations like the Minoans and the Etruscans, which I'm about to do. Um, let's lock it one second. Anyway, let's look at the, my bad. Um, Minoans. So these are the Minoans. Minoan, any member of a non Indo European people who flourished in 3000 to 1100 BC on the island of Crete during the Bronze Age. So it says non Indo European. We'll touch on that word Indo European in a minute. Notice these Minoans are brown skinned people. And you, the funny thing about this too is uh, I looked this up. I didn't include it. I should have, but you guys can look it up. They say all oh, the reason why these guys were brown skinned. Or the reason why these people look brown skin in their pictures is because the people like to depict themselves as brown skin. They like to depict their women as white skin to show differentiation between the sexes. That is laughable, right? Who would do that? But anyway, Minoan civilization, Bronze Age culture, which was centered on the island of Crete, 3100 BC. These are the Minoans, right? This is a Minoan fresco. Uh... The Akatri prehistoric city, uh, Akratiri. As you can see, look, there's even like afros, brown skin. See, there's no way around this. These are the original people of the island of Crete. This is a fresco. Look at all these brown skinned people, right? Some light skins, but all these brown skinned people, right? These are Minoan civilizations. These are all Minoan pictures. Minoans. Uh, like I said, uh, the original inhabitants of Europe were dark skinned people. All right. Um, this is a uh, young man. These are more Minoans carrying to their goddess, allegedly, right? And this is where they say, "Oh, look, see, look, uh, the men were depict themselves as this, and they depict the women as white." Why the? Why would you do that? <laughs> why would that be our style? Why does nobody do that today? Right? You got a. Uh, this is called. This painting is called Africans in the Bronze Age. I think this painting is actually called. The captain of the blacks, a Minoan mercenary leading some uh, alleged Ethiopians right here. All right. Then you can look up the Etruscans, the Etruscan civilization, 8th century to 3rd century BCE, right? 8th century to 3rd century BCE, uh, the Etruscans. And they were, uh, they were a Mediterranean trading power that flourished in central Italy between 8th, 8th to the 3rd century BC. Etruscan civilization. They were also known as the Aturians, the ancient people of Aturia, Italy, Tiber, Arno rivers, west and south of the Apennines. They're the, there's the Etruscans, right? Let's see what William Boyd Dawkins, a geo, geologist and archaeologist, had to say, a guy born in um, the 1800s. Let's see what he had to say. Let's see what William Boyd Dawkins had to say about the Etruscans. In his book, Early Man in Britain, and his place in the tertiary period, right? See what he had to say. Page 323. 
which says, uh, from the intimate manner in which they are associated with the Iberians by classical writers, coupled with the agreement in small stature and swarthy complexion. Once again, swarthy means black. Let's prove that real quick. Swarthy. Dark colored, tawny, especially of skin. Especially in reference of skin. Right? Aquiline, blackish, swarthy. Right? Svarts means black person. See swarthy, black. Tawny means brown like tan leather. Like dark brown leather. Right? So they were black and brown people. Right? The, uh, the uh, Etruscans were. Or the Iberians were. We're going to get to the Etruscans in a minute. Anyway, it says uh, they belong to the same non-Aryan branch. He's telling you they're not white people. Non-Aryan branch of the human race. It is also by no means improbable that the small, swarthy Etruscans whose empire extended in the earliest times recorded by history of the Northern Alps and the Tyrol to the same non-Aryan stock. Right? So they were non-Aryan. They were swarthy. The Etruscans. The Iberians. Right? In my belief, the Iberians of France and Spain the Salurs of Wales, the Ligures of the Southern Gaul, of Southern Italy, and the small, dark Etruscans are to be looked upon as ethnological islands isolated by successive invasions. Yeah, they were invaded, right? Pointing out, now check this out, pointing out that if we could go deep enough in past time, we should find that the whole of Europe was inhabited solely by a swarthy non-Aryan population. So the whole of Europe was originally inhabited by a swarthy, non-Aryan population. That's according to him. Now let's look at some pictures of the Etruscans, right? These, these are Etruscan tomb painting, 200 BC, brown skin. Etruscan stone, brown skin. Etruscan wrestlers, brown skin. Look at that. Uh, Francois tomb, look at this. Brown skin people, these are the Etruscans, right? Tarquinia, right? And they even have it. And this this debunks that thing. Oh, they 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 painted themselves uh, as brown and the females as white. Well, look at this. These brown skinned people are next to a so called white man, a blonde haired white man, right? Probably of the Latin tribes of the Idumeans, right? Because remember, and when I say Latin tribes, I'm not talking about the uh, so called Hispanic. When I say Latin, I'm talking about like Latin from like Rome. And not even from Rome, because the Etruscans originally ruled Rome. But like I told you, the Edomites wormed their way into Macedonia, went into Greece. Alexander the Macedonian conquered that area, and that's where the Greek, the Hellenistic Greeks were formed. And then ultimately it ended up becoming Rome. Another video for another day, but this is a uh, Polynesian man. This is an Etruscan, right? Roman fresco from the Alarium of the House in Pompeii. More brown-skinned people, you know? See what Godfrey Higgins said about the Etruscans. He was an historian and an antiquarian, right? He was born in the 1700s, though. Born in 1772. He wrote a book called Anocalypsis. He actually wrote Anocalypsis Volume 1 and 2. We're going to go to Volume 1, and we're going to go to page 216. He says, Mr. Franklin makes an observation, which is new to me, that the ancient Aturians, which means Etruscans, had the countenances of Negroes, meaning what? They had the same countenance, skin complexion, as the Negroes, right? This is an Etruscan from 400, 300 BC. This is a Polynesian man. They look like brothers. This is an Etruscan antifix 500 BC. Looks like a homeless Samuel Jackson, <laughs> right? Um. This Etruscan antifix in 500 B.C. looks like damn Draymond Green. And this is what it says about Etruscan civilization and what happened to him. It says much of his culture and even history was obliterated or assimilated into that of its conqueror, Rome. Right? So their civilization was obliterated and assimilated to the Romans. So they obliterated them from um, from uh, modern history, most of what they did, man. All right? And, and what they look like. Right, and look at this DNA analysis of ancient Rome reveals a cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan megacity. All right, it says uh, the analysis found that the ancient Romans were from all over Europe, the Near East, and Northern Africa. Rome was a cosmopolitan melting pot kind of place, says study co-author Jonathan. It wasn't until about three thousand years ago that the inhabitants of Rome started to genetically resemble the modern inhabitants. 
modern residents. So he says it's only three thousand, about three thousand. This is according to him. It's only three thousand years ago that Rome started to resemble the modern inhabitants. In other words, they're like the modern day Romans, the modern day Greeks, the modern day Italians, right? That's what it's basically telling you. Who are most part white, right? Even though you still got some dark skinned Sicilians, you know, out there. Um, now let's deal with the Caucasian invasion, right? Let's deal with the Caucasian invasion, right? Um, so let's deal with it. How did these people get into Europe? Well, first of all, it's in the name Caucasian. The word Caucasian is a description of the so-called white man, right? Is a remnant of 18th century racist thought invented by anthropologists who categorized humans into racial groups and created theories about white superiority. So in the name Caucasian, which once again depicts the white race, where does Caucasian come from? What does that mean? Caucasian is pertaining to the Caucasus Mountains, right? The white race. Why is that? Because they crossed the Caucasus Mountains to get into Europe, all right, as an, as an invasion. The Caucasus Mountains is a mountain range, all right? It's a mountain range intersection of Asia and Europe. It's the intersection between Asia and Europe. Geograph geographically, the Caucasus and its mountain ranges are considered part of the natural boundary between Europe and Asia, right? So they went from Asia, they crossed the Caucasus Mountains, and again to Europe. That's where you get the term Caucasian, right? You have a place called, you have things like Eurasia. We have like the Armenians, um, you know, things like that, right? You got like the Armenians, the Russians, the Georgians, right? You see how they're, you see how they're, uh, pale complected well these places are in eurasia right as a matter of fact like russia for example russia for those of you that don't know 75 percent of russia 75 percent of russian territory is located in asia right <laughs> so the majority of russia is actually in asia not europe 75 percent of it is in is in uh asia not europe for those of you that don't know Right now, let's look at Central Asian countries, right? Like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Iran, and Cambodia. We're going to focus on really the top of the first, what, five? And we're going to get to the bottom of this. These people migrated into this region, right? Simple as that. Um, History of Central Asia. Check this out. History of Central Asia. It says it's the likeliest source of the populations who latter inhabited Europe, Siberia, and North America. So the people of Central Asian descent later inhabited Europe, Siberia, and North America. Right? The so-called white man. That's what I'm telling you. These are Kazakhstan women. They look like Caucasians. Now some of them have a uh, so-called Mongol-like features, right? And we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna explain that in a minute. You got the people in Tajikistan. They look like Caucasians. Some of them have epicanthal folds, right? The women of Tajikistan, you know, they look Eastern European, right? This is a woman in Uzbekistan. Uh, see, look, these are all Uzbekistan women. This one looks like an Asian. This one looks like an Arab. And when I say Asian, I mean like, you know, like the uh, Chinese, Japanese, that of that sort. This one looks like an Arab. And this woman looks like a so-called white woman. You know why? Because, uh, well, you had the Mongolian invasions and you had the Muslim empire by the Arabs. They put their seed line in certain regions, right? Turkmenistan, these people look Caucasian. Now, mind you, all these places I'm giving you, they're actually places that are in Central Asia, not Europe. Meanwhile, they're still Caucasian-looking people, right? Like I said, the reason why some people have these features right here is simple, right? You have something known as the Mongol, the Mongol Empire, right? Uh, as a result of the Mongol invasions in 1219 to 1224, Kazakhstan and Central Asia became part of the empire of Genghis Khan, right? So Genghis Khan conquered parts of Central Asia. And what do you think he was doing when he was over there? Well... <laughs> Look at the Mongols, Mongolians. They had places in China. They had places in Russia, right? And guess what? Guess what the Mongols were known for doing? Brutal acts against Khan and his successors, 
They were uh, forcing themselves on a lot of females. I'll put it like that. Right? Khan himself would have often had women lined up in order to beauty, yada, yada, yada. Slept with the wives and daughters of defeated rulers. Today, 16% of men can trace their lineage back to Khan. Evidence of how many conquered women were subjected to um, being forced upon at the hands of him and his descendants. So that's why you have some Mongolian-like people in parts of Central Asia, as long as well as people that are that look like just straight up Caucasians, right? And this is from the New York Times. Check this out. It says, uh, "Historians suggest that the arrival in southeastern Europe of people from the steppes. When this is the steppes, it's talking about the Russian steppes, like I said, that Caucasus Mountain region." From the steps may have contributed to the collapse of the old old Europe culture by 3500 BC. So it's telling you people came from the steps. Um, they conquered a lost European civilization, right? They came from Central Asia and they conquered the people, right? And the steppe is for like places like Hungary, Ukraine, Central Asia, Manchuria, and the East, right? Um, this is from Science Daily. This is from Science Daily. It says, uh, it says, uh, one second. It says, third ancestral group, the ancient North Eurasians who contributed genetic material to almost all present day Europeans. Now, let's read this in context. It says, previous work suggested that Europeans descended from two ancestral groups, right? Um, indigenous hunters and gatherers and early European farmers. Now, check this out. The new study shows. That there was also a third ancestral group, the ancient North Eurasians, right? The people that came from the steppes, who contributed genetic material to almost all present-day Europeans. That's because, once again, the so-called white man comes from Central Asia. This is a Eurasian woman. This is a PNAS article. Um, it reads, uh, The questionable contribution of the Neolithic and Bronze Age to European craniological form, or craniofacial form. It says this, look at this. The surprise is that the Neolithic peoples of Europe and their Bronze Age successors are not closely related to the modern inhabitants. So the modern inhabitants are not closely related to the Bronze Age people, man. Right? They're not closely related to the Neolithic people of Europe or the Bronze Age people. Now remember, the, the, uh, the Minoans, like I showed you before, remember the Minoans were a Bronze Age culture. And they were brown-skinned people. Right? So it would make sense why the Minoans aren't closely related to the so-called white men. Because I just showed you why. Um, anyway, so the surprise is that the Neolithic peoples of Europe and their Bronze Age ancestors are not closely related to the modern inhabitants. Right? <laughs> and like I tell you all the time, just because they're, they're the majority there, that doesn't mean anything. But let's get one more. The Eurasian nomads were Eurasian nomads were a large group of nomadic peoples of the Eurasian steppe, who often appear in the history of invaders of Europe. Invaders of Europe, right? Europe was exposed to several waves of invasions by horse people, right? Uh, the earliest example of an invasion by horse people may have been by the Proto-Indo-Europeans themselves, right? <laughs> see that and like i said they were invaded just like they invaded australia today australia 87 percent of the people of australia are caucasian but australia was originally inhabited by who the australian aboriginals right these are the modern australians just like new zealand new zealand 74 percent of people of new zealand are caucasian right but we know the original new zealand people were the maori people now they're the modern inhabitants same with the united states 69% of the people of the United States are Caucasian. But we know about the Native Americans, right? Now we have the modern America. So their invasion is nothing new. Don't think it's so no far-fetched that they invaded Europe and became the main majority. They did it in Australia. They did it, they did it with New Zealand. And they did it with America, right? Let me get a bonus real quick before I get out of here. Um, this thing said, do white, do white people come from albino Javidians? It's just a myth steeped by racist Afrocentric pseudoscience, right? So they always say that's Afrocentric, which they don't come from the Javidians, but they say racist Afrocentric pseudoscience. Well, let's see what, um, Arthur Schopenhauer had to say. He was a German philosopher, 
uh, born in 1788. This is what he had to say in his book, The Metaphysics of Sexual Love. This is what he had to say in his book, Metaphysics of Sexual Love. Um, it says, Blonde people fancy either absolutely dark complexions or brown, but it is rarely the case vice versa. So he's saying that blondes favor dark complexions or brown people. <laughs> and that's what he said. And he said the reason for it is this the fair hair and blue eyes are a deviation from the type and almost constitute an abnormity analogous to white mice or at any rate white horses they are not indigenous to any other part of the world but europe so he's thinking they come from europe right they're not even from europe man. not even the polar regions and are obviously of scandinavian origin in persona it is my conviction that a white skin is not natural to man and that by nature he is either a black or brown skin like our forefathers, right? The Hindus, and that the white man was never originally created by nature, and that therefore there is no race of white people. Now, this is according to him, Arthur Schopenhauer, a so-called white man, right? And he said their forefathers had to have been black or brown, right? And that... It's not a natural thing. They didn't evolve this, man. Like I said, you look around the world, man. Everybody except for Esau uh, is a brown or so or brown so called brown or so called black skinned man. Really, just different shades of brown. Everybody, right? Whether you go to India, where you go to Asia, wherever you go, everybody is brown skinned, right? Except for one people. And that's why when you read about the scriptures, they never tell you what color the Moabites were. Never tell you what color. Ham's sons were, Japheth's sons were, um, Shem's sons were. When they were born, they don't tell you their color. Only one person who was born's color was mentioned, and that was Esau, and they said he came out red. Really, And Esau, yes, he's the so-called white man. I've done videos on it already, right? I'm going to keep doing videos on it, right? Indo-European, Indian, subcontinent, European. Indo-European is just a fancy word of saying uh, white race of mankind. That's just the famous way of saying Caucasus or European or white. But, um... Yeah, I just wanted to throw it in that. So, this guy saying that they derive from the Hindus, which, once again, I do not agree with. But that that's pretty much it on that video. I know this was a long video. Yeah, an hour, 12 minutes. You know, I went all over the place. But I wanted to touch on, yeah, they never evolved white skin. European, Europe didn't evolve no damn white skin. It was invaded, man. You know? And on this video, we touched on, like, the, the origins of man, you know, we touched on some regions, but they didn't ever evolve. We show that people still have white babies that are both black with no white ancestors. We touched on albinism, cold complexion, uh, the cold complexion myth. We touched on the original European. And we touched on the civilizations as well as the Caucasian invasion, right? So that's this video, man. Hopefully this was an edifying lesson. Um... Uh, once again, I want to say peace to the 12, but I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world commonly calls God. And Yahweh Shai is the Savior of the nation of Israel, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. I want to say Shalom, which means peace to people listening and learning. Brothers doing this work, truth, and sincerity. And to you, elders that's been doing this thing before me, man. I'm going to go ahead and get up on out of here. I've been talking too much. Peace.